Good morning. Good morning. Did everybody get a load of Meg's hat and her socks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it helps to dress in the dark. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have a brand new year, and so what we usually do is we start um, doing our resolutions for the, for the coming year. But you know, they kind of don't work. <laughs> we often give up just a little ways into it. So I thought I'd suggest something different. Why don't we just think we are okay exactly the way we are? And then also think that other people are okay exactly the way they are. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be quite a big practice. You know? <laughs> um, and usually, you know, if somebody is saying to you, oh, I don't know what to do, um, what they usually want is they want you to listen and they want you to agree with what they've already decided they're going to do. And if you give suggestions that are other than that, they will usually do what they were going to do anyway. So there's a, there's a whole sense of relief that we can uh, get into by letting ourselves be the way they are, we are and letting other people be the way they are. Like in this situation, there was this mother and she had three grown sons and they were all very successful and they wanted to please their mother at Christmas. And so the first one bought her a great big beautiful house and the second one bought her a Mercedes and the third one, knowing that she liked to read the Bible, um, he had this parrot trained to <laughs> recite all the verses of the Bible on command at great expense and uh, at, at, you know, time consuming at great expense. So the mother said to the first son, I don't need that big house, I have a house and I only live in one room anyhow. And to the second son, she said, I don't need that car because all my friends are dead and I never go anywhere anyway. <laughs> and to the third one, she said, but you really got me something practical. That chicken was delicious. <laughs> What do you think the chances are of that mother ever being pleased or those sons ever stop trying to please? And he used to say the chances are slim and none. <laughs> That's right. So I think that we can kind of relax and realize that as we get older, our jobs are different. And, and when we go and we visit our children at, um, at the holidays, um, they're doing the cooking, they're doing the driving, they're putting on the show, they're doing the child care. And basically what they want from us is they want us to tell them how wonderfully they're doing. And so I find that everything goes really well and everybody's really happy and has a great time if I shut my mouth. <laughs> so if I'm thinking those kids ought to be in bed at 8 o'clock and not at midnight, and I don't say that, that works. And if I'm thinking, um, the children should put down their cell phone and talk to me, and I don't say that, that works. <laughs> or if I'm thinking, oh, we think we should have pecan pie for Christmas instead of pumpkin, and I don't say that, that works. Everything is not my show anymore. It's somebody else's show. And, you know, when you really look at it, they're doing an amazing job. And the, and the show is different than it used to be. So it's kind of fun to join in to what extent we can. Like my little great-granddaughter who's eight came to me and said, Noe, do you need help with your cell phone? And I said, yes. And so she taught me how to text. She, she hung in there until I was texting her back and forth and doing it right. She's a good teacher. And then she also got a thing called a Wii. I don't know if it's a Wii game or what you call it, but anyway, you all know what it is. And, and uh, it was a choreographed exercise kind of uh, video thing. So all of us were up at midnight on Christmas Eve all doing this exercise thing together. And it's very fun to join into their world and do these things that uh, we just didn't do or we didn't know, we, we didn't know about. So we have a whole brand new year that we can uh, kick back 
observe the show. So enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>